Welcome back to Houston Live. Two Houston comedy legends are bringing the laughs down to Galveston, the birthplace of Juneteenth to commemorate the holiday and its legacy. Yeah, it's the first annual Juneteenth Comedy Festival. It will be headlined by Billy D. Washington and Rodney Bigham, who are joining us now with details on this special event. Guys, welcome to the show. Yeah. Good to see you guys. Yeah. Well, and listen, we're going to get back into the deep dive of history. Lauren and I were telling you during commercial break, we were watching some of your clips upstairs. You both have had such incredible careers, worked on some of the best stages with some of the funniest people in comedy. But first of all, let's talk about the significance now of Juneteenth. Because for many people growing up in the States, they didn't learn about Juneteenth growing up. I just learned backstage. Oh, no. <laughs> well, yeah. you come to the right place, yes. and the special yes. is yeah. perfect. <laughs> And, and, it was the, and it was the white person that taught me, Todd. Yeah, yeah, all right. But how meaningful is this for the two of you <laughs> to be able to make this an even more visible federal holiday that it finally now is? What I think is it's important to not just uh, acknowledge it. You have to commemorate it, because if you just acknowledge it, then it's like a, a participation award for slavery. It's like you guys came in last place, so we're just going to acknowledge it like that. But to be a part of commemorating it is, is the cool stuff. It's to be able to get out there. It's like Rodney and some of the other guys on the on on the show, Dave Lawson is great. And I mean, it's going to be an amazing comedy show. But at the end of the show, my role is not going to be. They're going to they're have enough laughs. But I have a bunch of stuff to say. Just about Al Edward, Edwards, who is a special friend of mine, who fought for years to get this Juneteenth day done. And when he finally got it done, it was a good thing. And I think it's super important for us to be able to do this and to be a part of the first ever Juneteenth comedy festival. And it's going to last for another hundred years. And so it's it's great. I think it's a great thing. And the really important part was my check cleared. <laughs> well, hold on a second. You're still writing checks. No, no, the check that they gave Cash me. Cash and checks. For, for, <laughs> the check they paid me for doing it this week. Well, yeah, I think it'd be pretty ironic if they didn't pay you to do the. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like. But the, that was the really. It, it'd be important. slave labor. That's that's to, what to that's celebrate the, the ending of slave labor. Me, right? I'm I got saying, you. That was the most important part to me. <laughs> right. The check clear. So right. I'd now, be, when right. we I'll talk, you, Derek mentioned some of the biggest names around. You guys were some of the early, uh, the big, big names. When you hear about people starting their comedy careers and the, these venues, these back in the day venues, the early 90s. What was some of your favorite memories? I know you guys have worked together for many, many years. Do you have some favorite memories that just kind of pop into your head? I don't know that we have favorite comedy memories together, but we have... Cool. That, was, that was a yeah. fire in... Uh, remember the fire, the, the club that... Burnt? No, okay, that wasn't favorite. <laughs> no, that was... That was oh, you. the that time was that I knocked the guy was, out? No, that was... Oh, okay. So, so the Def Will Comedy Smith, Jam was... <laughs> The Deaf Comedy Jam was a big deal. Yep. Uh, I did that in 1994, 1995, and 1997, and that was kind of the biggest, the biggest thing in my my 90s career. I mean, we've been able to survive like every decade by pretty much I, I would say like reinventing ourselves. And and I was a you know, I worked on VH1, so I had I was the last ever VJ on VH1 to have a, you know, I was I was the last one there. For so. kids who are not familiar with the term VJ, why don't yeah. you go ahead it's, and it's describe a, yeah, it it's, it's a video jock. It what? was like a, a person that, that that introduced videos. It was, and I had a show similar to this, like, every morning for, like, two years, and it was it was great. But but before the music video would come out, there'd be somebody like me. I'd be the person that would come out and introduce the video. I'm like, hey, uh, this is skitty, Squiddy Politty with Perfect Way. Okay, what do you don't want to tell y'all? <laughs> you want me to tell y'all. Billy hosted... A Michael Jackson special on VH1, which that was that was really big for me. You know, I don't remember if he don't he don't like. Well, about well it. it was like after I got fired. It was, it, it aired after I got fired. Uh -huh. and, and one day you got you guys will go through this. You got fired. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna air. Oh, we've been through it. <laughs> we've been through it. <laughs> no, the, the, con the contract was over, and they they aired it like two months afterwards. And I was at a hotel in in in, in Vegas, and I didn't know when it was gonna air. And I just saw it, and it was like. A really cool moment to like watch this. That was a cool that moment was, that for was me mean. to see my homeboy doing that. Yeah, because really we've known cool. each other since kindergarten. And supporting each other along the way has oh, got to yeah. be yeah. so cool. Rodney, yeah. you have earned the title of the heavyweight champ. No, I gave me that. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> heavyweight <laughs> he, champ of comedy. He fights a lot. Too. He fights a lot. <laughs> so it was like, 1993, like though. Hard to believe that was 30 years ago when you first officially started yeah, your I was, career. I was uh, 28 years old. And, and uh, you were influenced by people like Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, uh, what was, what was Tim Conway? Tim Conway, yeah, yeah, I love yeah. Some Tim Conway, man. And then seeing Billy do it, Billy was already doing it, and he took me with him to uh, Rockefellers one night. I wow, you was opening for uh, Paul Rodriguez. Wow. Yeah. Why yeah. are we not talking about this? <laughs> you don't, you don't remember taking I me? Don't, I don't remember. Did this one you was doing a joke about the black banana? 
Oh, he had maybe, a t-shirt. Okay. He, uh, yeah, what? it's a very it's a PG version of that uh, story that we won't get into right now. But yeah, I remember that Rockefeller's was a huge place, and you ended up working there too, right? Yeah, and I was and so I was that I was like, if Billy could do it, I could do it. Yeah, you know. So I I got my feet wet, and three months later, I was on Showtime at the Apollo. Right. Okay, and Showtime at the Apollo. Can we talk about this? Yeah. Because speaking of iconic stages, when it comes to being a performer in any indus any entertainment industry, it is such a tough road. Right. What was your journey like as black comics trying to make it and trying to find your seat at the table when historically, you know, we, we didn't see black characters front and center stage. I'm glad you brought that up, man. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't gonna talk about it. <laughs> but see, we gonna say, where are the cameras at? Where's my camera? <laughs> no, I'm just going uh, uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it, Comedy is still really segregated. Yeah. You know, and it's sad that it is. But there's a lot of comedy clubs that say uh, mainstream comedy, then they ask you, are you an urban comic or actually, are you, are you a Def Jam type comic? But it, it's sad that a lot of black comics don't get the stage time until they get a really big name. That's why you haven't seen some of the best talent in the world because they're in the, the, the nightclubs, what they call the chitlin circuit, you know? So, well, I have made a, a, a career well, off, the, off the curiosity of white people. <laughs> Just so you know. I mean, I started comedy. I wanted to do it because I would see all the negative stereotypes about black people as portrayed by white people. And I was like, no, we aren't all like that. Like, I, I've never been the comedian to go up and, and degrade myself or our society. I always want to be the guy to uplift. So, so when people come up. See, degrade, words like that. Yeah. See, that's why, that's why we're a little different. We went to school together, but right. Billy, Billy got an education. I got a Texas high school football player. <laughs> 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 see, see, Billy could go in clubs and say stuff like degrade and quintessential, and I'd be like, say, man. Yeah, I didn't say quintessential. <laughs> quintessential is actually a big word. No, 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 the only yeah. reason I know the word quintessential is because I heard it come out your mouth. Oh, and okay. I had to, I had to look it up. <laughs> I have heard you say it b before. I was like, damn, what is yeah. that? Yeah. But that was great. Thanks for asking that, though. That was that was a really cool question to ask, like because typically people want the they want they want us to be the uh, the novelty, the novelty, yeah. right? The sideshow, yeah. right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what we were before, and now I think we've sort of you know evolved into something that people want to listen to for you know just to know more about culture. Because believe it or not, man, it's like you know those that style of tennis shoe was made famous by by black athletes. I mean, we can look around and see black what culture. What is it? Everywhere. What, what, what are those? Well, those, no, are, those are bands. <laughs> These are vans. Those are bands, but the I'm style. I'm a skater. Of, but the st yeah. yeah. You, you skateboard? <laughs> you skateboard or you just skate? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the style of Chuck Taylor. I'm more yeah. of a rollerblader, but that's a That's, that's a another story. Story for another, story. Story another, story for another day. Yeah. Too. <laughs> well, yeah. guys, thank you so much for stopping thank by. Thank you, guys. Pleasure we appreciate talking. it. Thanks for always bringing the laughs. You can say or hang around the whole day if you want to. No, and we're huge fans of you guys, too. Congratulations on eight years. Just about. So did we, yeah. did we say what the event was and why they could get tickets? I got, how about I got you? You want me you to read it, it right now? Yeah. yeah. Well, don't, we don't forget know. the first annual Juneteenth Comedy Festival will be held on Saturday, June 17th at the Galveston Convention Center at the San Luis Resort. Doors are going to open up at 7 p.m. Showtime is 8.30 and the prices start at just $20. For a link to get your tickets, visit our website, HoustonLife.tv and click on that Scene on Houston Life section. How'd I do? How was that one? I, that was perfect. All the that was yes. Good. All right. Rodney Bigham <laughs> and Billy D. Washington. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank y'all for having me. Right Appreciate back. it, man. All right.